Hey guys, we're getting a ton of questions on this Milwaukee top off and on other inverters as far as how much they'll run, what will happen if you plug in a microwave or a miter saw or a table saw or even a circular saw to this little guy or even some of the larger units and how long will they run. We're going to try to go over a lot of basics today, not go too deep into a lot of things and try to show you a little bit about what's happening with this stuff and also with some batteries. Stick with us. All right, I wanna start with the basics and how most of this stuff is all put together and they revolve around simple battery cells. Now, this is a 21700 cell, 21 millimeters diameter, 70 long, zero because it's round at the end. You can put all that together. This is an 18650, you go by the same parameters. You can see 18650 is obviously not as big in diameter, not as long according to the numbers, zero at the end, so it's still round. So these two batteries are what makes up a lot of what you'll find on the market. So if we were to take a look at this 18 volt battery pack, it's a 1P battery pack. So it's got one set of five cells in the bottom. So you're just shoving all these along the bottom in here, right? Wiring them together, 18 volts, because these are 3.7 volts a piece. Confused yet? Hopefully not. Stay with me though, because this DeWalt 5 amp hour battery pack is claimed to be 20 volt max. This Milwaukee battery pack is 18 volts. They are the exact same on the inside. There's no 20 volt magical power in here. There's no, you know, 20, there technically is 20 volt magically in here. It goes by nominal voltage and what they want to claim. Do they want to claim that in the, this case, smaller battery cell is four, uh, as far as uh, volts, four volts or 3.7 volts. And that's why they use the max because technically these are nominally 3.7. DeWalt claims them to be four max. Weird, right? So there's no difference between these two battery packs and DeWalt doesn't have more power than Milwaukee because of the two volt difference. We, believe it or not, we still get that question quite a bit. So next question that people get kind of weirded out with a lot is the DeWalt flex volt battery packs because this is 20 volt or 60 volt. It's just a matter of how they did the wiring on the inside and what connections you use on the outside. So there are three of these battery packs in here. Three 18 volt packs, or as DeWalt would call this a 20 volt pack. Three 20 volt packs. So if you're using a 20 volt tool, you have a 3P battery pack here, three layers of cells that are gonna give you 20 volts a piece, DeWalt terms. Technically, if you take them and wire them up into one, 20 plus 20 plus 20 equals 60. So if you run them all together, you can get 60 volts wiring them up differently. You with me? Hopefully. So that's the easy part, right? So when we come into something like this, this top off, which is 175 watts, we have to go into volts times amps equals watts. So we take an 18 volt battery, we have to use an inverter to change everything into 120 volts, right? So now we can use the volts times amps equals watts, but we have to do some division because we have 120 volts. We don't know the amps, but we know the watts at 175 max. So we're running like 1.25 amps in here ish, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. That's all this can run. So when we take a tool or I mean, at this point, I have this plugged in to this IP stank. Check that name, right? So this is just uh, an, a battery inverter, 635 watt hours. Watt hours is again, just voltage on the battery pack right, times amp hours equals watt hours. So this is a 90 watt hour battery pack that is gonna charge, not completely, but it'll charge or is charging a 635 watt amp hour inverter. The reason it's charging it's because this is only a one amp pull on 120. It won't last that long, but, well, I don't even have it turned on. So now it is anyway. 
And the reason why it's going to do so is just because it's only one amp. So a microwave, definitely way more than one amp. If you get into these saws or a lot of tools, they're going to run anywhere from 9 to 15 amp. So what happens when I plug a large circular saw into this and, right, these batteries power a circular saw. But we have a conversion going on here from DC to AC and we need the AC amps, not DC amps, AC amps. So when we hit the trigger on this guy, nothing. Until it blows the circuit breaker here, right? And even when we go to something larger, like this dude, whose output says it should be able to take care of this. Well, let's just plug it in. And at the same point, there's two things here I wanna check. And I think if you buy any of these inverters and bring them home, especially some of them off Amazon, and I'm not saying this one's shady, but um, it's actually a pretty good unit. You would wanna check the volts. And here, this one runs at 112 volts, basically just sitting there. And you can check the Hertz too. Hertz is very, very important. That's gonna give you your clean power. It's at 60.5. 60 is good and you get some of them run between 50 and 60, but 60 is what you're gonna see as a baseline at home. 112 volts is low on this at this point. You're gonna see between 119 and 124 at home for basics. If you start seeing these going way up, we've seen that before, we've had one blow up our RV, not cool. A lot of things can happen with high voltage, a lot of things can happen with low voltage. And then beyond that, you can go into pure sine wave in modified sine wave. A lot of Googling to do there, have some fun. But if we plug this guy in, right? Everything's on. Five minutes later. Sorry, I had to fix what was hit here when I plugged in. So we have 112 volts here. If we hit this saw, That'll burn this saw up quickly because we drop down in voltage fast and I hate to see it, I have to reset this um, in some way. That should have kicked off a lot sooner over here because we didn't have the power to turn this up so we're just killing motors by doing that. So that's what you're gonna see with a lot of this stuff, that a microwave is gonna take a huge amount of power, tons of watts. So you're gonna to wanna to check that out on the microwave, it'll tell you in front. Most are gonna be anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000. Not gonna be able to be even run on something like this. You're gonna need a huge inverter. When you're looking at tools, even though we have a lot of tools like drills and other things, and I had a small old Craftsman drill that I initially plugged into the Milwaukee top off, I thought, you know, everybody knows we have a battery powered drill. Plug it in here, it won't even turn it on. Uh, but that dude actually started smoking slightly, so I didn't want to continue to burn that up. It's uh, vintage from my grandpa. So when we look at all this stuff that goes together, there's a ton of confusing parts here. I get it. it it's hard to kind of comprehend what you have and what you're buying and what's going And There's a lot of blind faith going out in here, but know that this Milwaukee top off is an awesome little unit, but it kind of is built for its name. It's to top off your batteries that you have with you. The little batteries, your iPad, your cell phone, your mp3 player uh, anything that small it's it will work and i actually went out and did plug in a small very small you know low amperage battery charger to 12 to charge a 12 volt battery in one of our tractors it worked and it does but you have to be careful that you don't overload it or you're just going to pop the power so use this what it's meant for and Realistically, it's just meant for small little things so you can keep them with you and keep them charged. And when you get up to something larger, you're gonna have to read on all this stuff to figure out what these things are good for and what they're not good for as far as power supplies. Obviously, if you bought this dude to power the saw, it can't even get it spinning with, with no load. Once you put a load on it, it's just gonna trip this. It's tough. I'll put some specs to all this stuff and links in the description. And then the other thing that we had to even confuse this even further, solar panels. 
why can't we get a solar panel to charge this, a unit to charge the battery, and solar panels are another whole thing that we need to go into at another time. Just as a, kind of an overview, this unit here takes four to seven hours to charge through AC, complete. It will take 10 plus on a bright sunny day to use solar panels, but that's going to depend on how much solar panels you put together to create how many volts and watts and everything that's going to convert into this battery pack. So there are solar panels on RVs that will completely run the air conditioning units, two air conditioning units at once and no issue. It'll keep up charging the batteries as the, char the batteries charge, the inverter will flow and power the air conditioners and that'll work, but there's always a battery pack in between solar and what you finally get. So I'm sure this is confusing. I, I kind of get it. I hope that this isn't as bad as what I feel like it's going to be at this point. A lot of me talking here. I hope that it answers some questions in everybody reads comments. So if you have something that you're like, hey, you said it this way and I would explain it like that, put them down in the bottom. Continue to help people learn more about the different tools, about what's out there, because that's what this is all about. It's trying to learn and understand a bit more. You're obviously going to have to do a lot of Googling on little sections in here that might not make a whole lot of sense. I hope not, but ask some questions. I'm not an expert on all this stuff. Just did my best to try to give you an idea of what I know from dabbling in it for quite some time. As always guys, we appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, have a great day.